because some people don't see opportunity. And I think there's almost like a fight for Brexit, like a Brexit fight, two versions of ourselves. There's a fucking negative, destructive, fucking uh, everything shit version and a nice positive version. Over the last 20 years, I reckon I was, when I first moved down from Somerset, so to Somerset, I reckon I was like fucking 40% fucking positive, 60% negative. Principally, I could wake up and it depends on which way I flopped. Right now, I reckon I'm 90 fucking percent, 90, 95% positive, 5% the other version of me. That fucking fight that is going on right now, I help people win that fight on themselves because it's the biggest fight that you're going to overcome. How the fuck do I look at something like COVID and my business going to fucking nothing as a fucking positive thing? What the fuck is that about, right? And there's other people fucking bitching, oh, my business has been fucking wiped out. Get on with it, you cunt. Johnny here. So I haven't made any content for ages. It feels really weird sitting here right now. And the reason being is the agency has just consumed all my time. It's been really, really super busy, which is amazing. And really, you know, we're working with some really cool clients now, working on some really cool projects. And it's really difficult to sort of balance the time in the agency and managing day-to-day -day clients and projects and making content. I don't really know how people do it, but things have calmed down a little bit now and I really want to throw myself at making cool stuff with Brandmaster Flash and interviewing some really interesting people. So season two is coming now and I'm going to kick it off with an amazing guest, Mr. Brad Burton. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of history about how this came about. I think it was about two years ago, I was just on Instagram, just scrolling through as we do and I got stopped in my tracks by watching this video and it was a it was a montage of Brad Burton's clips and little bits of him on stage chatting to people and there was one story that he told that really resonated with me um, it was about when he was in his 30s how he was delivering pizzas for a living and how he built his business from scratch and I, I just thought it was amazing. I thought it was really inspiring because I've had diff a difficult journey in growing and building my business too. And what I liked about him is that it was real and it was raw and he doesn't hold back. He's just a very outspoken, loud, brash person. But I loved it. And ever since then, I became addicted by his work. And um, just to give you a bit of history behind Brad, he's the number one motivational speaker in the UK. And he's the founder of 4 Networking. He's an entrepreneur. Since 4 Networking, he's got 4 Networking online and lots of other businesses that he's developing. And he's a really, really cool dude. Um, and we had a really good conversation. Uh, as I record this, it's April 2021. Uh, and it was a few weeks ago and I really wanted to jump in and ask and find out more about him as a person and what inspires him, what drives him forward and how he's built his personal brand and how he's built his businesses and you know what's his purpose, what gets him up in the morning, why does he do what he does uh, and hopefully you're going to really enjoy this interview. Uh, now, Brad is a very, very colourful character. He's also got very, very colourful language as well. So if you're easily shocked, then this might not be the interview for you. But he's, he's an amazing guy and you're really going to get to hear some, a really, really inspiring story. So here we go. This is Brad Burton. Enjoy. Brad, thank you so much for joining today. It's a real pleasure. Delighted. What do you know about my name, Johnny? What do I know about your name? No, well, no, about me. About you. Well, that's interesting because that's the first thing I was going to ask you. I came about you about two years ago, right? Right. And I was zooming along my Instagram, just scrolling around, and I got uh, through a video and it was you. And I was like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> it, you were loud, you were brash. And what, uh, what I, why I was why I thought you were magnetic is because you're real. You say how it is, mm -hmm. you talk from the heart. And when we talk about authenticity, it's a word that, word that gets branded about all the time. 
I think you're authentic because you don't give a shit and you say it how it is. So where does that come from? How did that come so, so let me tell you, throughout my life, I've always underachieved. So I'd work at a company and I'd be the, the northerner with the cheap suit on and the waistcoat who'd have the matching socks and the matching tie based on me seeing something on The Apprentice or Dragon's Den. So I was kind of osmosis about what a business person should be or whatever, an employee. <clears throat> And at the very point when I went, this isn't working for me because I'm looking like a I'm looking like a carbon copy of everyone else, but not a particularly good one. And actually, I started my own business off to be my own boss. And um, and it was funny because I started a company called Four Networking Off. This was back in 2006, and it ended up, you know, people said you can't start a business and, and no, you've got no uh, working capital, you've got no qualifications, you've got all the reasons that people told me I couldn't do. And I went. This is crazy. And actually, for the first time in my life, I decided to do it my way, not what society told me I should do. You know, you can't swear. Well, why not? Well, it's offensive. OK, but I, I, that's what I do. That's what we do from up north, you know. Um, and I just think that it was it was kind of this new Brad was born about 31 year old when actually um, I just took the mask off. You know, not the mask, but you know what I mean? They're kind of pretending to be something you're not in order to, to get by. And I went, this is bollocks. And, I, and ironically, at the very point when my life turned around was at the very point when I got rid of the mask, which is, you know, so we're all, we're all like, as almost think these things are like suits of armour that protect us. They just yeah. keep us grounded in, in, in a place that actually isn't what we're about. And I'd say there's something wonderfully liberating uh, about being yourself like warts and all, and I don't give it, genuinely don't give a toss. If somebody doesn't like me for being me, that's okay. You know why? Because I like me. And in today's day and age with Instagram, where you know, looking for the adulation of strangers, pff, come on, crackers. Yeah, I agree. One of the main things that we do in our business, we do a, a, a process, an exercise, if you call it, called brand strategy. And it is what mm -hmm. it is, really. But to explain it to, to, to most of my clients, I, I talk about it being a playbook. It's a playbook of how you look, you talk, and you act. And with brand strategy, it's very much about peeling back the layers as it is about adding it on. And mm -hmm. I feel like that process that you went through about peeling back the layers and, and showing your true self is a, is a form of strategy and, and, and it worked for you. And it, and, it, and it works with everyone, really, doesn't it? So let me, let me just say something. You know, am I Brad Burton, the UK's number one motivational business speaker, the four-time best-selling business author, the founder of Four Networking, the largest joined-up business network in the UK? Or am I Brad Burton, the guy who's been addicted to drugs twice, done four years on benefits, got shot at when he was 21, left school with no qualifications and delivered pizzas at 31? You know, two sides of the same coin. And if you go back far enough to anyone, you're going to find stuff that is questionable, stuff that you're not necessarily as proud as you probably would, you know, we would have been back then. And actually, that's, I would, wouldn't be much of a motivational business speaker if I'd not had all that kind of adversity and overcome those things. So rather than being a problem, and I'll tell you something, I, um, it was back in 2008, I reckon it was, 2009, my PR person contacted me and said, oh, <laughs> my PR person got hold of me and contacted me and said, the Salford City Reporter wants to do a, um, do a piece on you, like a feature piece on you. <clears throat> and I thought, shit. I'd moved away from Salford to get away from the gunshots. And actually for me to go back into Salford, like high profile with a full page picture and a photograph about where I am and what I'm doing, I thought, shit. So I went, oh, ring you back, put the phone down. Rang her back and said, go and do it. That was when this new Brad Burton was born. Because actually what happened was I thought, you know, hiding isn't a strategy that is a, a long-term one. And that applies to branding as well. You know, at some point, you, you you might as well just show your hand, and that's what happened. And and what I've done since that point, I wrote, I wrote about in, in the second book, the chapter two in there. I actually shared the circumstances behind the shooting in my book, and I did that so that actually um, no one's got anything on me. No one's got anything on me. No one can around and say, "Oh, you do realize he was addicted to drugs twice, don't you?" Well, yeah. You do realize is you know uh, every single thing about my every single bad thing that somebody could could negatively uh, present. I've talked about it openly. So I've kind of negated anyone's power. I love it. I, lo I really love it how you, you tell the story because that's what hooked me in the first place. There was like snippets of you telling the story and how you left mm -hmm. Manchester and you know, obviously you, you're in Somerset now, aren't you? And, and obviously you set up your business. Have you, do you, have you ever done an audio version of the book and told that story? Or is it all hardback at the moment? 
No, no, I've got, I've got my first two books, Get Off Your Arse 1, Get Off Your Arse 2, the red and the, the yellow one there, done on audio. The third one, I went with a publisher, so Wiley Capstone, um, largest or second largest business publisher in the world. Um, they chose not to do an audio book. And then now what? Once again, I think to myself, there's a lot of work involved in doing an audio book, right? And if somebody can't be asked reading, that's okay as well. So I'm just I'm like, I was thinking to myself, somebody said, oh, well, I don't like reading. I said, well, I don't like sitting in the fucking studio for three days and paying five grand to have a fucking audio book done when it's perfectly there. So, you know, I, I, no, I'm not. But what, you, you know, you will get splices and snippets of my life and the, these books every time I speak because it is my life. You know, I'm not, I'm not like I say, hiding from anything anymore. And it's wonderfully liberating not having to hide from anyone. It's great. Yeah, magic. Right, I've got some. Uh, I've got some actual quick fire questions here. Now they're not. Oh. They're they're called quick fire, but they normally give the longest answer. But they normally give the best answers. Here's the first one: the most important thing you've learned in the last twelve months that you can't delegate responsibility. Right, you know, if you think about this last twelve months, I've had to become a startup. My once five thousand strong networking meetings, real life ones in the real world, went to fucking nothing twelve months ago like literally a million pound plus business to zero. And actually, you know, I could have sat there going, oh, come on, Boris, come on, Rishi, so like, you need to sort this out. Or get off my ass and actually make stuff happen. You can't delegate responsibility, as tempting as that would be, to go, well, it's Boris Johnson, they need to sort it out on Rishi Sunak. You can sit there whining about it all day long or do something. So responsibility, you can't delegate it on you. Yeah. I, I noticed through on social and LinkedIn stuff, you, you were sharp on that. As soon as the... The lockdowns here you were on it and I, I think I will talk about the four networking online in a bit but I get the impression that was that was bubbling but it was fast tracked super fast to get it listen, get it where listen, it let me be. tell you let me tell you what's wonderful about about me is people underestimate me completely and actually that now what that I wrote there that principle is that that's that's the way that I live my life the way that I live my life now what is because the only time that people ever ask now what is when the shit's in the fan you've lost a contract You've got someone pregnant, you know, somebody's died. Oh, now what? I always ask that question. So people under stress don't make great decisions, right? People under stress don't make great decisions. So what I do is I make decisions ahead of me being stressed. So I know in the event that this comes my way, this is what I'm doing. So it's a whole principle behind my whole kind of ability to make decisions because often the difference between success and failure isn't quitting. And actually where we end up in our lives is a direct result of our decisions, good ones or bad ones. If you want more success, make better decisions. So the whole principle of everything that I'm about is about making better decisions. And I will not make a decision when I'm stressed. But what I will do is I'll make a decision when I'm not stressed, ready for when I am stressed, I know which way to go. And that's what we did before networking online and on other businesses. Where, where does that come from? Where does that instinct, that, that switch, where, where, does that, where does that come from? Fucking great question. So I honestly think I have been moulded to almost military special forces type mindset right you know i've got friends of mine who are ss man uh, and stuff and actually so many people think I'm, I'm military so many people believe in military um and i'm not but i've always been fascinated by that ability for people to make decisions under fire right and that's something that i've been since being a kid since 1980 when the ss raid and so forth you know uh, it's just something i've carried and that ability and, and as i've got older I've started looking at decisions. You know, each day we make 30,000 decisions. Fact, 30,000 psychological, psychologists today says we make 30,000 decisions every single day. How many of them do you reckon that most people are conscious of? And I'm just guessing, I'd say 500. So what happens to those 29,500 decisions every single day? We just like by default, just, just do them. And I'm conscious of every single decision. So every single day I wear the same frigging clothes, right? Same clothes, jeans, trainers, Brad Burton t-shirt, and, and, and that's what I wear every single day. That decision is taken away. It's not important to me. This is makes me feel comfortable. No, it's not very, I'm going to speak. I'll speak at events like this. You know, I'm speaking at ZeroCon, 3,000 accountants like this. JCB like this. Costa like this. Bentley like this. Just take any decision that is not, not, not useful. Take it off your, off your, 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 your kind of to-do list. And they just focus on decisions. And that's what I do. I think, I think it comes from that. I genuinely think it's, it's come from, from my always been interested in, in kind of like, say, military stuff. Mm. Don't yeah. know? Cool. Okay. Who inspires you? 
every single uh, person who is a small business and who's out there and they're waiting tables at weekends to keep the business afloat or, or loading pallets of, of nappies at Sainsbridge, whatever. You know, oh, we're Richard Branson and Alan Sucker. I couldn't give two fucks. Like, genuinely. And I'm not being disrespectful to them, but what I'm saying is I value everyone. I treat everyone the same with respect. I don't give a fuck how much money they're worth. I don't give a monkeys how big the business is. Because I tell you something, I respect anyone that is trying to make a better life for themselves. And I also respect people who recognize that there's more to business than just making money. That actually what you've got to do is make a life. And what you've got to do is to find true success, true success. It's about being happy and content, which, you know, I sound like a modern day hippie there, but I'm telling you, I've got friends of mine who've got millions of pounds and they're deeply unhappy and broken. And actually I think, whoa, what is going on there? But, you know, externally, you go on their Instagram, you go, whoa, look at all this success. And then they ain't happy. So I, I admire anyone who has uh, found their level, uh, anyone that continues to, to, to do the difficult things uh, in order to get to where they need to be. Yeah, it's amazing. I, I, I read in a book recently that success is a feeling. Uh, and obviously feelings are totally personal to that person. But it's interesting talking about work life and that's something that's come up through the pandemic is it's like work life integration. And I can see from a lot of your posts that you put out there that, that you, you, you're, you're on a mission to find the balance between your, your family, your young family and yourself and your business. And how have you found the work life integration over the past 12 months? Are you adapted to it? Are you moving with it? Yeah, yeah, completely. But let me be quite clear, you know, I've had to go to a startup business. I just told you a million pound plus to zero overnight, like literally, you know, and it, but it, well, my son to zero. Oh, but you've still got staff that you've got to pay for in offices and you've got 70 grand worth of bills going out a month. Okay. Now what? <laughs> right. So, so I've adapted because, you know, I'm, I started my business at 31. I'm 48 now. And I'd never had a pot to piss in in my life. Lived in Masonettes above chippies, you know, lived on Tesco's beans and waffles. So I've never had nothing anyway. So that's a good thing in that what it's allowed me to do. It's allowed me to adapt. So I didn't have a fucking wine cellar to worry about. You know, I didn't have a holiday home or three properties or 10 properties. No, 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 no. All I had to do was go back to this mindset, this Salford mindset of being brought up on a council estate and go, right, how do you get through this? And that's that resilience. And I think that fundamentally through my DNA is that ability. To, you know, I say this before that I was on the wrong side of the tracks, but there was the right side of the tracks at the time. And that served me beautifully because I'm still a little bit, by all accounts, a street kid, you know, that ability to make things happen out of nothing, about to looking for opportunities. I've just kind of changed my, my focus about what I focus on. And this, it, it served me beautifully. And remembering that you can't delegate responsibility, it was on me. And everyone looked towards me as a leader, you know, leader of this, people looked towards me. But what I did, which was so, people say brave, I didn't see it as brave at all. I seen it as the only option. I told my thousands of members, hey guys, we're days away from bankruptcy. Just to let you know, that's the reality of it because of COVID. Nothing I've done, no misappropriation of funds, no mistake that I did, but we are days away from bankruptcy. However, we are now going to go to an online model. And, you know, depending on what happens over the next five, six days, we'll determine whether that video came up on my timeline on Facebook. Fascinating to see. Mm. But actually, I had nothing to lose. So people are worried about losing face. Fuck losing face. There's a bigger thing. If you, you can save your face and lose your business, which one's it going to be? Or lose a bit of face and save your business. And that's what I did. And people respected that honesty. No, it's almost like the last 12 months for you in, in, in pre-COVID would have been a, a sort of three or four year journey. And you've done it in one year. You must have felt like you've lived five lifetimes in the last year. You know, it's... Uh, what I'm great at is I'm great at dealing with courage under fire. And it goes back on to what I talked about, that ability to be able to go, okay, the shit's in the fan, it's popping off. How do I get through this? What do I have to do? What do and it's the other question that I, I, I did. I'm going to knock it about somewhere in my office, but what does this make possible? When the shit's in the fan, what does this make possible? And when it gets tough, and it will get tough, it's almost like you're reading a book and you're halfway through and the main character's coming across whatever you're coming across. Think about it, right? Say to yourself, this is not how this story ends. And think about the, the book that you, you know, you're reading, your main character. How would you like them to end up? And that's how I did. I worked it backwards about, right, almost like a book I've written for, but right, like, like a book. This is not how this story ends, as in 12 months ago. 
right, how does it end? Da, 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 da. And I worked out backwards and I kind of mapped it out almost like real time, like a computer game. And that's the thing as well. I'm a big computer gamer. I've been playing for 30 years. What's computer games about? It's about challenges. It's about coming across a challenge. It's having a main quest. It's having a oh, side quest. It's about getting up, pick a loop, getting experience, fighting things. And that's what I've, I think I've always, what I've done now, the Brad at 48 is the stronger version of me at 48 than I was at 30 and 20. And I've never let any of that go. And I've realized that that's what allowed me. You know, I had him back in, in 2012 when I wrote this one, right? I had a, a nervous breakdown. It took me two and a half years to get back to normal. Now, the great thing about a nervous breakdown is you get the opportunity to rebuild yourself differently. That prepped the fuck out of me for what we had to look forward to last year. Because if I'd not had a nervous breakdown then, I would have had one a year ago. And that's the thing, you know, it's like, and, and, and what's great, I say great, right? But it's true. What's great about this COVID is it's almost like a Jenga. We've we built business and life a bit fucked up and we've and then your ability to rebuild it differently and stronger. And that's what we've done last year. It's really good about how you use visioning to get you through this, the roadmap. We, we do a lot of work in brand strategy, what obviously called visioning. We create a vision statement and then we reverse engineer it. So we say, look, where's, where's Brad Burton in 2030? Well, I'm here. Okay, how do we reverse engineer that? Like you deconstruct a recipe or a menu. And that's exactly what you did. So it's interesting that you use your visioning to build the... Uh... Let me show you this. So this is what I, I teach people, right? This is my Kingmaker program. That is like a character sheet out of a computer game. You ever played a computer game? Yeah. Right. So a level one wizard starts off and, uh, you know, we've got two magic missiles and a little kobold normally fighting in all time. We've got a rest or have some magic mana potion. A level one wizard. A level 20 wizard, fucking orcs and fucking giants and they're doing fireballs, summoning dragons, flame shields. What's the difference between a level one wizard and a level 20 wizard? It's the battles. But it's not only the battles, it's the experience that they picked up from the battles. So many people, what they end up doing is they end up having a fight or they, they just do enough to get away from the pain and don't pick up the experience. I have looked at every situation or situation in my life and I've gone back and revisited and said, right, what was the lesson that this was trying to teach me here? So getting shot at when I was 21 years old, right? What was the lesson it was trying to teach me here? What was the, the experience that you're resilient, that you'll find a way, that life goes on? That actually, everything happens for the reason, even the shitty stuff. Because if I think about it, if it wasn't for the worst day of my life back in 1995, I wouldn't be talking to you now. There'd be no books. There'd be no Brad Burton. There'd be no thousands of four networking members. There'd be no Brad Burton, the UK's number one motivational business speaker. Wow. Something so fucking terrible as me getting shot at meant that I moved away. I met my wife, family. It's like mind-blowing. Yeah. And this is what, so when you look at something so fucking terrible, I have impacted the lives of thousands, tens of thousands, whatever. Even if it's just through phone networking, forget about me speaking in my books, phone networking. Thousands of lives and businesses have been impacted as a result of something so fucking terrible. And that is why I look at COVID and as terrible as it's been, it's happened for a reason. It's and like it slide, it's sliding people. doors, isn't it? If that, if, if that person hadn't chosen to pick up the gun and shot at you that day, and he, he had, I'm assuming he hadn't done it, then again, that, that life would have been different. And it's interesting because I had a conversation the other day that these sliding doors aren't happening as much now because everyone's trapped in at home, not happening. And I think people are missing, they're missing the, the randomness of life. They're missing the, the chance encounters, the odd things that happen that put you on a different path. And I feel like that's what we need now. We need the so, randomness. So, so, so let me tell you something. Here's a really good point you make. So I'm working on a TV show with somebody at the moment. That's as a result of what you just talked about. But let me be clear. What ends up happening is there's signposts all day long. And if you don't see them, you walk past them. For instance, there were signposts when I was on benefits. They said to me, hey, Brad, you know, why don't you start your own business? I'm like, <laughs> me? <laughs> no. <laughs> Twice I did that. Fucking hell. Right now, I walk past them, but there is opportunity all around, so don't dismiss it. For networking all day long, I'm on a meeting today at two o'clock, there'll be 30 fucking people on there. There's 30 sets of information. This platform, you know, you contacted me during lockdown, so I didn't go, ah, yeah, but it's not real life, so we're not going to do it. There's fucking loads of opportunity, and it's about seeing it, and this is like life because some people don't see opportunity, and I think there's almost like a fight for Brexit, like a Brexit fight, two versions of ourselves. There's a fucking negative, destructive, fucking uh, everything shit version and a nice positive version. Over the last 20 years, I reckon I was, when I first moved down from Somerset, so to Somerset, I reckon I was like fucking 40% fucking positive, 60% negative. 
principally I could wake up and it depends on which way I flopped. Right now, I reckon I'm 90 fucking percent, 90, 95% positive, 5% the other version of me. That fucking fight that is going on right now, I help people win that fight on themselves because it's the biggest fight that you're going to overcome. How the fuck do I look at something like COVID and my business going to fucking nothing as a fucking positive thing? What the fuck is that about, right? And there's other people fucking bitching, oh, my business has been fucking wiped out. Get on with it, you cunt. Oh, I should have said that. <laughs> Stop it, oh, fuck it. But you see, it's like fucking get on with it. And this is what I've done. I look for opportunity where it was always there. I just didn't see it. Yeah, amazing. So the, 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 the original question was who inspires you? The second part of that question is who, who do you want to inspire? Once again, every single one of those people who is out there struggling, every single one of those people that is building up, everything, you know, what pisses me off more than ever, anything is these fucking clowns selling these nonsense fucking training courses. You'll get an eight-figure income, seven figure. Shut the fuck up, right? I've been in business now for fucking 16 and a half years. 16 and a half fucking years. Half of my adult life, a third of my life. Do you reckon what? I'll go on some Facebook course for fucking a few grand and all of a sudden, fuck me, I'm a millionaire. It's a lot of shit. And yet people want to believe that. They don't want to believe that. What The thing is, the people want to skip the steps. But the problem with skipping the steps is you skip the fucking lessons. And that's the great thing is having not skipped the steps. Last year when the shit popped off, I was good because I've dealt with this stuff before, so I knew what to do. So who do I want to inspire? I want to inspire those people that are not fucking daft enough to fucking believe that there's some fucking secret that I'm holding back. Yeah. Some secret that you know, can get you uber welfare. You know, there's anomalies in any situation. I could fucking do a course. Hey, you'll learn the secrets. Spend a fucking week with Brad Burton. You'll learn the secrets. Like you can make a national fucking network, you know, for 10 grand, fucking 100 people in the fucking room. That's how you do it. But actually, really, you want to be doing 40,000 miles a fucking year? You want to be fucking getting up when you've got no fucking money at five o'clock in the morning, driving to a room with fucking seven people there and trying to pretend it's fucking great? You know, that's what you've got to do. But people don't want to hear that. They want to hear that it's some fucking clever click funnel system. No, actually, what it does is drop leads in your fucking email box all day long. Bollocks. It's just fucking bullshit. You know, don't get me wrong. I, I won't say I'm an anomaly, but you look at how I could pitch. I could talk about how I sent one email that generated fucking quarter of a million pound, 75,000 pound in one day. And I could, I could give you a copy of that email and everyone would be like, you know, a, a selling it as a selling point. You'll learn the email that got me 75. Oh my God, let's sign up to this fucking course. But the thing that I forgot to mention, but I'd only mention it on the course, is it's fuck all to do the email. It was the first time we did a fucking sale within my organization. It had been going for fucking six years. The first time ever we did a sale. And the reason we did a sale is because everything was fucked. But that's the thing. But nobody wants to hear that. People want to hear that there's an email that's somewhere along the way, clever words. So the people I want to inspire are those people that are not stupid like that. And those people that recognize that this is going to take your fucking time. Your success that you want to realize is going to take your time. And people who are waiting tables right now, people who are fucking no qualifications and don't believe it's fucking possible. That's what I want to inspire those people. And actually it's been great because I've over the years I have done and people have come my way who have built up successful businesses based on what I've told them from the formative thing from the outset. That to me gives me the fucking greatest joy ever. Amazing. It reminds me a little bit of like the music industry. There's a load of musicians and, and, and singers and stuff that want to just do the X Factor, get on there, catapult to stardom, and it's all hunky dory. But the majority of singers have got to do the working men's clubs. They've got to do the pubs. They've got to sing to no one every night. And, and, and I resonate with that, Brad, because I, I started my business from nothing. I started from a bedroom in my boxer shorts on a computer with no money. And for years and years, I grafted, grafted, grafted every day out there, grinding it, meeting people like you said turning up to a network event smiling in my cheap top man suit with no money and just grafting it each day and and, uh, and uh, you said something once in one of your motivational speakers um speaking events where you were talking about that you were working at Domino's, I think it was, or delivering pizzas. Sorry, and you said I, I, I gave myself a pat. I should have given myself a pat on the back. I beat myself up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you were beating yourself up, and you should have said, "No, you're doing <coughs> the right thing." Fuck it, listen, and that's the fucking thing with this. You know, you can go on social media and you can believe that there's some fucking kid on 24 getting out of a fucking Lamborghini, getting into a helicopter, playing tennis with fucking Alan Sugar, and you think, well, I'm 20 fucking five and I've not got that. Mm. Hey everyone, I just wanted to jump in here and offer my support. If you're looking to solve your business challenges, you're looking for new ideas, or you're simply just looking to grow your organization, 
then it's time for a new brand strategy. I'd love to know more about you and your business. So get in touch with me through seedcreativity.co.uk and we can get things moving. Now back to the show. There's a reason that racehorses wear blinkers. They don't give a toss about the competition. And that's what I say to you. You know, compare you to you. Find your level. I'm at a situation right now where I live in a fucking five-bedroom house over in Somerset. I've got one room that I don't go in, right? I've got a fucking amazing garden. I've got a fucking daft fucking car. I've got everything from a material thing that I could possibly wish for sensibly. Could I have a bigger telly? Yeah. Would it enhance my life massively? No. And this is the problem, is that this whole fucking... You look online and it's like, what are you doing? People that are, you know, have got fucking 100 properties. Oh, you fucking idiot. You need to get 150. It never ends. It never ends. What are you doing it for? You know, you're kind of fast forwarding the fucking life to get to the end of your life. And so I've made a load of money that you can't spend. A load of properties that you can't. What are you doing? I was brought up on fuck all and I never starved to death. So I just, for me, I've recalibrated what is what life's about. I wanted a 10 bedroom mansion. If I would have worked really hard and I could fucking work and get a 10 bedroom mansion. I've got one room I don't go in in this fucking house. I have six what is that room? You keep, yes, I'm really intrigued. What's the room that you don't go in? Fucking room. Just, we're just fucking shite in it, just throwing stuff in. <laughs> you know, I thought it was just... the, 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 the wife not letting you in there for some reason. No, 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 no. But, but you see, the point I'm making is that we end up chasing this stuff, believing that it's validation. And actually, people think that by getting a fucking Ferrari, you know, that once again, you get the adulation of people that don't you don't know. I mean, I've got a fucking daft car. And actually, it's good and it's fun. And I'd rather have the daft car than not a daft car. But honestly, there comes a point when you tick that box and it's like, mm. and I just, I just, I just, when people, it's almost like people are, uh, happiness is around the next corner. Success is around the next corner when I get a new property or when I get a fucking, when I get married or when I get a bigger business or when I get office and pff, success is here. It's fucking here. Yeah, it's and actually, you know, there's someone right now in a fucking nightingale ward or a fucking cancer ward that would quite fucking happily bite your fucking hand off for everything that you've got going on. So while you're sat there going, oh, I've not got a Ferrari, I've not got a bit of shut the fuck up. You've got a today, you've got a tomorrow. Honestly, someone in the cancer ward, do you reckon that I, I, fucking, I, I know fucking people who have died with fucking millions of quids in the bank, right? Fucking none, and they would give the fucking lot. They would give the lot for one day. They would give the lot up like that for one fucking day. What does that say? He says that today is as valuable as the, as the last day of your life. But what we do is take today for granted. We take today for granted. We take our friends for granted. We take our family for granted. We take time for granted. You know, we are 25 fucking minutes closer to death since the minute we fucking started on this. I just think that what we need to do is start fucking waking the fuck up about what's important. And don't get me wrong, I like nice stuff. You know, don't get me wrong, I'm in a much fucking better place now than I was five years ago or 10 years ago and so forth. But there comes a point when you go, seriously, what the fuck? And I've got, and this isn't me being down on money in any way or form. I love money. I'm not being down on money. But what it is, is about understanding what the fuck you're doing with that money. Because I was having a, 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 a this God, it must have been two or three years ago now. God, I just remembered. Because I, I'm, I'm a vegetarian now. How do you know, by the way, if you're interviewing someone who's a vegetarian and vegan, don't worry, they'll fucking tell you. Um, I was having a gaucho steak with a mate of mine. And he's got a two million pound business, recruitment business. And I went, fucking good, lad. You've done beautifully there. And this is a guy who's from a council estate. And he goes, yeah. He says, but you know, the thing is, I'm going for a 10 million pound business. I went, wow. Well, they said, yeah. So why is that? Well, you know, so I can get the nice things in life. Like what? Well, you know, the nice things in life. No, I don't fucking know what you're talking about. And I just stopped talking and just looked at him. He said, yeah, the nice things for my family. I said, like what? He had no fucking idea. I said, how old is your boy now? He said, five. Cool. Now how long is it going to take you to get this fucking 10 million pound business? He said, eight to 10 years. All right. And how old is your boy going to be then? And what are these nice things that you'll be able to get that you can't get with a two million pound business? He was fucked. Now that isn't me fucking taking any way someone's, someone's dream. I just, I've come across so many people. I've spoke thousands of times, two and a half thousand times in public. I've spoke to fucking hundreds of people over the years, right? Hundreds of fucking people who have said to me, they wish they would have listened to me, but they wish they'd heard me 20 years ago or whatever because I've spent so much fucking time working on my business, making a load of fucking money, and I'm a big fat fucker, health issues all fucking thing, I got divorced, and I go, fuck that. Like, that's not success, that's success, you're fucking ill. And there's this constant, you know, drive for fucking, for, for fucking nonsense, 
that actually doesn't help your life, doesn't move your life forward. Now, don't get me wrong, I like nice stuff. I've got fucking nice stuff all over me, fucking all over the show. And somebody said to me, oh, I've got self-limiting beliefs on Clubhouse. I went, you what? And they said, you've got self-limiting beliefs. Tony Robbins has got a $300 million fucking whatever. And I went, fuck's sake. I said, listen to yourself. I said, I'm from fucking Salford, Manchester. Fucking lived in Masonettes all my life. I got shot at, I got no qualification. Did it, did it. I've written four fucking books. I speak at the highest level in the UK. I've got a fucking ace business that doesn't require me. I've got a wonderful, healthy family. And what, you think that I've got self-limiting beliefs? What the fuck is up with people? You know, I'm thinking Tony Robbins, 300 mil. Dickhead, he should have 600 mil by now. You can't sensibly spend it. So what the fuck are you accruing this money? Why are you spending time to accrue more money to do what? To invest for a rainy day? What the fuck? When does that rainy day come? I don't know, man. I just, I, you know, I can say I look at the world differently. No, I look I at the world you, differently. I think you look at it like most people. What 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 makes people feel like that then? Why do why what drives people to be to be all about? I'm not going to say capitalistic because I think that's slightly different. But I think to to be materialistic and want and have that drive for more, more, more stuff. You know, I think it is probably validation to prove a point because I certainly know it was for me when I didn't have anything with my business. And I tell you what I did with my business, and this is a this is what kept me going. It wasn't about the money. It was about making a positive difference. That's like if I'm Robocop, like my primary directive is to make a positive difference. And actually by making a positive difference, I make money. And I'll give you an example of why money is not a big enough motivator, right? If I said to you, um, I'm going to give you your dream fucking car and all you got to do is run 50 foot over uh, lava and fucking broken glass barefoot and your dream car, whatever it is, is on the other side, the key's waiting. Do you reckon you could do it? I'll give it a go. You would give it a go, would you? And then about three foot in, when the pain starts kicking in, you'd be the worst fucking idea ever. Because you'd end up getting to the other side. So, okay, so you get to the other side and you now lose your feet. Would you do that? No, nah, probably not. Right, but that's, you know, it's all, and this is the thing, you're saying you'd do it, 50 foot of fucking lava, fucking glass, and this is what happens. People go, yeah, I'll do it, until, of course, you've got lava and fucking glass and you can't even get fucking five foot near it and it's burning you. You wouldn't do it then. So it's easy to go, yes, and this is, so let me tell you, you've got family? Yeah, I've got two kids. Right. If I had a gun to their fucking heads and I said, I'm going to kill them if you don't get across, do you reckon you could make it? Yeah. Right. Now, that is how you motivate yourself. That is how I motivate myself because it's never been about money. It's about making a fucking positive difference for these children. Or, or, that or, or I might, if I if I if I got if I got a bit further through and I was struggling, I might use them as a bridge and use them to get over the other side. So yeah. <laughs> all right, but you see the point. It would be a whole lot easier. You've got more fucking chance if your kids were on the other side than if there was a fucking Ferrari or whatever fucking kid daft car you want. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's the motivation. That's how I've done what I've done is my synapses. I've changed them. So this is not about money. This is about me fucking making certain that I can provide a life for them. And that's what kept me going. And this is when, when people say, you know, how do you manage in last year? If it was just about money, fuck it. I've got everything I want. Yeah. So it wasn't, it was about fucking maintaining life for them. So that when I'm gone, these guys and girls will be cool. Boom. Fundamental different. That shows you motivation. And so many people have got it about money. And actually, if I go punch you in the fucking mouth, how many fucking punches in the mouth do you want for a thousand pounds before you go enough? And this is what I'm trying to say. I would take them all day long for my family. And that's what I do. I look at this. I talked before about fucking, we're almost like little computers. We're like little biological computers. The way that we look at the world is like an operating system. You can look at it negatively or you can look at it fucking positively. If I said to you, there's a corridor and in that corridor on the left is a room full of negative people. And on the right is a room full of positive people. Which, which room would you be in? Uh, I'd go to the positive people. Well, why the fuck on social media are there rooms full of negative people? Yeah. Why the fuck in real life are there rooms full of negative people? See, this is the thing. But what ends up happening is we kind of gravitate towards the negative. People are arguing about fucking Brexit or fucking anti-maskers or maskers. We end up spending fucking time. And what we're doing is we're programming our fucking head for negative shit. Fuck it. You know, I, I, I deleted my news apps. I deleted all my apps off the fucking dinghy because I was into it all last fucking year. The pressure's fucking on. I've got no fucking time anyway. I'm doing my business and I'm looking about all fucking sorts of fucking protests going on and people getting shot 
on fucking Dinga. What the fuck? Yeah. And then you wonder why your head's battered. You know, this is like almost like a fucking, like a fucking, um, like having a fucking a pipe pot. A pipe pot can only have so much water in. Once it, once it's filled, it's filled. So what are you fucking you putting in your head? So this is what I'm trying to say. I, I mean, I'm not into fucking, I'm not a fucking psychologist or anything. I'm not qualified. But yeah. anyone who's qualified has just fucking had it made up by someone who's clever. Yeah. So why don't you make your own rules set up? And this is what I've done. And this is the way that I live my life. I'm, I'm religious, as you might know. Bradism, right? Fucking help many, hurt few, live life. That is how I live my life. Help many, hurt few, live life. And, and, and it served me beautifully. Yeah, it's really interesting what you say. Um, the, the, the work I do is, obviously, I've mentioned it's about brand strategy. And I have like a 12-point framework of working with small what startups to really big brands about helping them develop their playbook, their brand strategy. And some of the core things that you talk about in your life, in your your work, and the way that you just, your, your culture of the way that you do things is so um, woven with brand strategy that I, that I deliver. So the purpose, you know, you want to make a positive difference. Your visioning helps you all the time. And you've got your philosophy there. And, you, and it's woven into not just everything you do in the work, but the way that you live your life. Um, so that, that's interesting that we talk about brand. And, and that's why I wanted to in, interview you, Brad, because you, you've got two brands here. You've got the Brad Burton Motivational Speaker brand, and you've got the four networking online on, online brand. And they're quite close together. How, how, how integrated are they? How, how do they work together? So if you find Brad Burton, the UK's number one motivational business speaker, you find my books. If you find my books, you find four networking. You find four networking, you find Network Central. You find Network Central, you find one networking. You find three networking. You find Brad Burton's Now What Club. You find my mentoring. You find, fucking hell, it's all connected. And actually, well, you don't want to mix business personal brand. You know, I always say this to people. If you're talking about personal brands, you don't have fucking have one, right? Because when people start going, oh, you know, I need to work with personal brand, and you'll disagree with that, of course. But, you know, I never needed to be anything other than me. And that's it. That's where your personal brand, you can accentuate what you are. You know, the Brad Burton that is a motivational speaker, I don't go around high-fiving my fucking kids all day long, right? I'm a different Brad to that, right? But one of the things that I realized was there was a time when some people said to me, oh, Brad, you know, you're too loud. You know, you, you need to bring it down a little bit. You're pissing people off. You know, fucking never mute your own brilliance because it's too loud for someone else. Two sides of the same coin. People who don't like me would say he's aggressive. He swears too much. He's fucking this, that, and the other. People who do like me would say I'm confident, I'm assertive, I'm kind, I'm friendly. Two sides of the same coin. The only way that I can appeal to those people that don't currently like me is by changing who the fuck I am, which when I do that, I don't like who I am. Those people that like me for being who I am don't like me. You can't win. And this is what I say to people. I say, look, fucking be you. And if people don't like you for being you, that is okay. So a personal brand for me, and I've never, I've genuinely never referred to it as a personal brand, right? Like, so two words that I've never used. Personal brand, never used. And um, whatever, authenticity. I've never used those words in my life other than to feed back to someone like yourself on the conversation. Not once. Because I think as soon as you start saying you're not fucking authentic, my authentic self, heart-centric coaching, shut the fuck up. Just bullshit. Fucking buzzwords aimed at trying to fucking coerce people, in my view. I can say all I've ever been is me. Before I knew about business networking, I knew about meeting people and talking to people. Before I knew about personal brands, I knew about fucking the power of, 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 of marketing. And I realized that me, um, speaking as I am, was marketing. If people didn't like me, they would tell other people about me. It's fucking great. Is that the greatest marketing tool ever? And... and you're you're the art the architect of this you know you you this is this is you and this is your business your baby how much of it is planned how much do you sit thing and, and map it out or how much of it is just freestyling it and, and just doing so, it so great question jay by the way classic so everything is mapped out everything is planned real time so when you drive to from from somerset to scotland you kind of know where you're going but actually, you're only looking 200 foot ahead, 200 foot ahead, 200 foot ahead, 200 foot ahead, 200 foot ahead. Oh, there's a cat on the road. I need to dinger. That's what I do. I adapt. I have a short-term plan, medium-term plan, and long-term plan. And it's almost like those two pence machines in the arcade. Once the short-term plan goes, that medium-term one is replaced with that. I'm always running three strategies at any one time. So the strategy is, is at the moment, is, you know, like you found me. I didn't find you. We never reached out to you and your guys or we've not got anyone doing it. But somewhere along the way, that scattergun approach 
And once again, I don't know what your audience is. It, it doesn't make no difference to me, right? This is what I said before. I treat everyone the same with respect. It makes no difference. I don't doff my cap to Alan Sugar. I treat everyone the same. I don't look at people with power notes over their heads. I treat everyone the same because you just don't know the innocuousness of it. And that's something that so many people are, well, I'm looking for the ROI on this. What's your audience? Uh -huh. But right, what's the demographic? Shut the fuck up. You only need one person to go, my brother-in-law works for IBM and they want a motivational speaker. I've seen you on, boom, that's it. But so many people are strategical, trying to work out the angles. Just be you. You've got nothing to be strategical about. All you got to do is just be like, boom, boom, boom. And that's what I do, you know, which is always be growing. Always be growing, always be going in terms of I'm always busy. And what I mean by that, genuinely, I'm, I'm always busy. And what I mean by that is like, I've got a fucking goal after this call. So what is, and when I, whenever I'm speaking to people on the phone, I always have 10 minutes. Because otherwise you spend fucking seven minutes talking about how your Labrador is, how you're coping. And actually it's irrelevant. You just want to get onto the fucking thing. And that's something that I've cracked, that ability to be able to get to the, 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 the crux of the issue and the conversation and move on. Because remember what I said, time. The most important thing that we've got, and we spend fucking time in, you know, you go to a council building to do business and they're fucking having an hour meeting, so they fill it up an hour. If you had a 10 minute meeting, you get to the same fucking point. Time is the most important thing that we all have and we just fucking piss it away until, of course, it's your last day. Do you reckon you'd be having a fucking last day in your life? You've got to tell you what, we need to have an hour fucking strategy meeting. Of course not. So what I do is I do everything as fast as feasibly possible whilst moving correctly, you know, and that goes back down to that, I think that almost like special forces mentality. How can we move so fast, but correctly? And that's how I approach life. Magic. Right, I'm on my last, last, last part now. And I, I want to talk about networking, actually, because it's that's what you're, you're, you know, that's what you're the king of, and, and for networking, did that. Tell me about networking now, right now, and what does networking look like in the future? Um, you know, I, 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 and by the way, very quickly, um, I've spoke, I interviewed a, a lady called Fiona Duncan Steer, who does a networking event all over the Midlands. And she she is really excited about the future of networking and the and the fusion of online, offline and, and where it's going. Where do you see it going now and forward? <laughs> so it's not only for networking now. So this is a great thing about this last year. In the last year, for networking has been going for 15 years. In the last year, I've created one networking. I've created three networking. So we've actually got ourselves like a Thunderbird tweet all under the umbrella of networkcentral.biz. Go and Google that, networkcentral.biz. Um, so I have, if you think about a cheese board, do you like blue cheese? Can't stand it. Do you like it? Uh, not particularly, but I can eat it in sauce or a steak. Right, right. So you see the point, but I can guarantee there'll be someone you'll interview today and they'll go, I fucking love blue cheese. So what we've done is we've decided that actually what we need to do is create the cheese board. And that's what Network Central is. So not, so full networking, in essence, is a national network, which, you know, like I say, 5,000 meetings across the UK. One networking is single group, um, uh, single group next generation referral networking. I've, 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 done, I've done a kind of modern day version. If you think about a 1980s uh, Lamborghini and a 2020 Lamborghini, which one's going to be faster? Which one's going to be more appropriate? Boom. So I've, I've kind of brought up the old referral network and I've made it not shit anymore, not boring. So I've done that and I've got three networking, which is like modern day speed networking on steroids. So I've done that. We are going back. I've got 44 launches uh, in... I think it's June, 44 launches that we've got scheduled in June, um, real life launches. So we're twinning the hybrid model in that, you know, we was the largest joined up business network in the UK. Um, we are going to be probably running uh, a real life meeting over in Bridgewater or Somerset on, the, on, on one week. And then the following week, it's going to be online and vice versa. Just while we transition. But what's great, we've got all the bases covered, not only in terms of what's on the cheese that is on there, but also our online and offline stuff. And uh, no one, in the UK, no one uh, has moved as fast as us on this thing. You know, we're running like 70 meetings a week at the moment um, through four networking alone, and then 11 meetings a week uh, with, uh, sorry, 13 meetings a week through, through one networking. So we have moved fast, but what I've always done with my networking is I've put the member right at the core of it, rather than come at it about the organization, which I think fundamentally is almost like I'm going back to my old days of socialist values, and being brought up and actually borrowing people cups of sugar and stuff is that I've changed the way that networking is done. Not only the way that it looks, the way that it's branded, the way that it, it, the, the, the approach that we take, but also in putting the member at the, at the core of it. So I believe that networking uh, has changed forever. Uh, I've got no fucking idea what it looks like, but what I do know is that we are ready to go. Uh, you look at what happened. Lockdown happened. Next day, we had, uh, I think, 14 groups running. Two days after that, we had 40 groups running, bang, bang, bang. 
nobody moves as fast as others. Remember what I said, move fast, but move correct. Yeah, amazing. If anyone's listening to this or watching this and interested in online or offline networking, where should they go? Where do you want to send them? Go to networkcentral.biz and then you'll see all the offerings there. That you'll, you'll come and stumble across the cheese board. Okay, magic. Well, I'll put all the links into the posts and the comments on this video or this podcast. I'll stick it in the show notes. But Brad, I just want to say thank you for your time today. You're an absolute yeah. legend and I love everything that you do. You're a true inspiration. Thank you. And uh, like I say, you know, with this thing, it's, um, it is really about making a positive difference. And that's what I'd urge you to do is to pay it forward, make a positive difference. Let's change the world positively. <laughs> magic. Thank you, dude. So I hope you enjoyed that. As you can see, Brad is full of energy. He's a very, very interesting guy. Um, I do urge you to check him out on social media, check out his website, check out for networking, read one of his many books that he's published. He's a, he's a really down to earth person and I, I really enjoyed listening to him and and just feeling his energy, he's so passionate, you know, he really comes across like full of energy and, and he really believes in what he's doing and um, it's quite addictive. So yeah, check him out. I'll put his links to his website and his um, personal brand and his, all his different social media uh, in the show notes and I'll put it in the comments uh, on whatever video, uh, whatever platform you're watching this on. But I hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you again soon. But remember, be useful, be kind. See ya. Bye-bye.